بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحبده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد Today I want to talk about the new prime minister in England, uh, Rashi Sunak, I think is his name. I will first kind of like summarize my entire talk and then I will show you the specific things and the details and the and the connect the dots using evidences, uh, inshallah. Okay, so this man, Rashi Sunak, is no special guy. The way they're trying to make him look like, you know, he's some big investor. I'm going to show you what a big investor he is. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, obviously he was born rich. You know, he has a silver spoon in his mouth. Uh, he, um, you know, he's part of the rich, the, the 1% of the 1%, right? But in terms of, uh, you know, him and Goldman Sachs, he was there only for a few years. Uh, he was not any top level uh, executive there. He was just a junior analyst. Um, so that's about him in terms of, wow, this guy, right? So they're, they're making this all this noise about the first Indian. They're taking the conversation away from really what it should be, which should be about his qualifications in terms of the economy, which is what they're trying to portray him as. You know, he's this expert person who made millions of dollars uh, and so on and so forth. You know, when you have millions of dollars, you hire the people who can make millions of dollars, right? So, but he himself, uh, he got a bachelor's in uh, from Oxford uh, in philosophy and economics and politics. And uh, then he went to Stanford University and studied there. He started some companies himself. Uh, I'll show them to you shortly. And uh, so what are his, you know, why do they have him? They, they, they basically got this guy who's not voted there's no democracy there's no voting he just comes in and you know they're calling him the barack obama of uk okay you know that's all that you know when they when they brought barack obama when did they bring barack obama they brought him when the housing crisis was happening and you know bring this di diversion there's something different something that will take people's minds off of really what's going on okay so uh even though he has a history of finance but he's going to uh, take things in the same direction when you look at all of his issues in the same direction as boris yeltsin which means that because of what was happening in russia and ukraine and because of the energy bills going up people were like okay you know uh maybe we need to change the direction that this country is going to go into. But what he's actually brought to do is to keep things, everything going the same way. So, for example, he has a very good relationship with Israel. He believes in moving the capital of uh, of the, 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 the embassy of the UK from um, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He, uh, you know, he's all for the Abrahamic Accords. He is, uh, it's like, a, it's something in, good progress is what he calls it um he is a very strong uh, uh practitioner of his hindu religion in fact his grandfather founded a hindu vedic society that still exists he was once a, in in the in the amongst the trustees of that organization so he's a very strong hindu uh, uh alliance um we, and we know what the quran says about the people that will hurt the muslims what where what, what groups they'll be from and that is one of them. And he is a Hindu who has a very good and strong relationship with the Jewish community. So it should remind us of that verse in Sunan Ma'ida um, about the people that will hurt the Muslims and uh, the people that will be good to the Muslims, which I'll show you shortly, inshallah. Uh, but he is a technocrat. And usually technocrats do exactly what they're told to do. So what does he do? Well, he keeps things, he, he's committed to the war, he's committed against Israel, I mean, say so he's committed against Iran, he's committed to Israel, he's going to keep things going exactly as, at the, as the bankers and the globalists that he represents, uh, things going exactly in the same position, okay? Uh, and so in his investments, he's all for what? All the investments that have to do with the reset, the fourth industrial revolution. He's big on AI, which uh, 
I'm going to share something about that, inshallah. But he's big on AI, okay? So, you know, every, while everybody's talking about and celebrating, oh, a man of color, blah, 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 is the UK. It, all it is, it's a coup. You can say they've toppled the British government to bring in this guy to navigate the the navigate the dangerous waters so that he can convince everyone to go into more dangerous waters while everyone thinks he's going to navigate us out of this calamity that we're in okay and so now that's now let me go into the uh, specifics uh, of this person so um this is an e-financial careers rishi sunak does not put goldman sachs on his scv in fact he doesn't put anything regarding uh finances on his cv uh so despite working for goldman sachs between 2001 to 2004 sunak doesn't allude to his goldman sachs analyst years okay he was uh and then you know he founded a um a, he, he was working for a hedge fund uh, the tci fund uh, and for the Kaleem Partners, an equity investment firm, which he apparently founded himself. Okay. And uh, so now, uh, what was he uh, doing uh, at this um, place, Goldman Sachs? Okay. So he was just a, uh, a junior level analyst. So this is Business Insider. Uh, Rashi Sanak, the new... UK Prime Minister once worked as a junior analyst at Goldman Sachs in London. So this impression that people have, uh, you know, that he was with Goldman Sachs and, you know, he must have been some big guy there. Nope, that's, none, none of that's true. Okay. Uh, so he, 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 he was born rich and he had money and he created his own firms. Okay, let's move forward. So, Bismillah. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نُحْلِكَ قَرِيَةً أَمَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا." وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا and when we decide, Allah says, "أَنْ نُحْلِكَ قَرِيَةً" to destroy a city or to destroy a town. The word "qariya" means village. It means town. Uh, Mecca has been called "qariya." Jerusalem has been called Qariya, so it could be big or small. وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نُحْلِكَ قَرِيَةً And when we decide to destroy a city, أَمَرْنَا مُطْرَفِيهَا We cause its luxurious ones to take its leadership. This is one meaning of the ayah. وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نُحْلِكَ قَرْيَةً أَمَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا When we call, when we desire, desire to destroy a city or destroy a place or a town, we cause its luxurious ones to take, uh, take its command. Now, what is an example of that? So in the beginning you had presidents, for example, the United States, they had their salary 200,000. Then you had people like the Trump, you had like the Bush family, right? You had the Kennedy family. But before that, you had not so rich presidents. But then as time went by, the leadership went more and more into the hands of the rich. Now, uh, this uh, uh, Rashi Sunak is an example of that. It is when the rich take command, what is that a sign of? It is a sign of that this is close to destruction. This person's bringing just the fact you, you, I mean, people voted this person in to do what? To bring them out of the dangerous waters of dangerous economy. But just the fact they voted in somebody so rich, the 1% of the 1% is a sign from Allah that this is doom for them. Because who is he going to help? He's going to help the rich and the famous and the bankers and the technocrats and the the bankers and all the people he represents right so this is one meaning when we decide to destroy a city we cause its luxurious ones to take command 
And then what do they do? They commit evil therein. This is what this person will do. And then we cause the city to become utterly destroyed. There's another meaning to this verse. وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَن نُحْلِكَ قَرْيَةً أَمَرْنَ مُتْرَفِيهَا And when we desire to destroy a city, we cause its people to live in luxury. Meaning, it becomes, when a city becomes an, enter, an entertainment center, right? Entertainment and uh, luxury and wasting time and just you know, vanities becomes the state of the city, then that is a sign that now we're going to destroy this. And this person, uh, Sunak, uh, Rashi Sunak, he is a prime example of that. He's all about the drama and the theatrical, you know, staging of, of the politician with all his ability to act, uh, like as if he actually knows something and can actually do something uh, meaning nothing happens in a situation like the one we're talking about where you're in dark waters and you don't know where the boat's going to go and it's all in the hands of Allah but you pretend like you know what you're doing. So that's, you know, he does not have the qualifications to be considered as somebody who's going to save the world. No, what he is doing is he's sticking to the agenda of the elites of the West, okay? And uh, so let's continue, inshallah. So besides doing Goldman Sachs, what else did he do? So he spent three years there. He spent around three years at a bank, at the bank, covering U.S. stocks. So he was covering U.S. stocks, including railway and media. Uh, okay, uh, Financial Times reported. And then he also worked at one hedge fund and co-founded another before getting into politics. So that's his history. It's not really that impressive. Uh, at least not to me, okay? This does not somebody look like somebody who understands the economy, meaning what is money and what makes economies go up and what makes economies go down. No, he knows about stock market. He's, he's, he's observed the stock market, basically. He's reported on the stock market, basically. You know, he's a journalist of the stock market, but he doesn't know the mechanics of the stock market really as much as an expert would, okay, uh, and like I said, that he is not he's not that special when it comes to finances, and you know he worked at uh, you know uh, different places. For example, he worked at this company, uh, and he also um, worked at uh, this. I think he founded this company that you see over here, Kaleem Partners, okay. And uh, he also uh, worked in this particular company that was uh, a group of, you know, uh, Hindus coming together and forming a company uh, for Hindus in, in the field of investments and so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's go more into what does he really stand for. Okay, so, so here's an article. Um, what does Prime Minister Rashi Sunak mean for the British Jews? Okay, and here are some of his views. Uh, Sunak told the conservative friends of Israel hustling uh, that he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's historical capital. He agreed with Ms. Truss uh, that there was a very strong case for relocating the British embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So he's part of that whole Imran al-Bayt al-Maqdas, the rebuilding of Jerusalem that the Prophet had foretold. He vowed to get BDS restrictions on the legislative agenda. BDS is a movement to restrict, to boycott, diversify, um, and uh, you know try to restrict uh, the uh, the 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 workings with uh, Israel. Sanctions to boycott, diverse and san sanction, which is a movement that started here in the U.S. against Israel. So he he vow vows to do something against that. He described Israel as a shining beacon of hope. Now, when people feel that Israel is the beacon of hope, you can now imagine uh, being a Hindu on the one side and thinking Jews are the hope of the future 
what this person thinks about Muslims. You can just think about that yourself. Okay? So now uh, let's look at some of his other views. So Rashi said in an interview, he said Rashi told her that he is concerned about Iran's alleged pursuit of a nuclear weapons. He spoke about his concerns that the UK government has not taken the threat posed by Iran seriously enough. Uh, about the Gulf, uh, Sonic views the Abrahamic Accords between UAE, Israel, Bahrain, Morocco as a positive development. Okay, He's not too fond of Turkey. And uh, so this is what his views are on. And then some of his other views we'll see. You can see this headline here in Times of Israel. It says, New British Prime Minister has called Jerusalem Israel's historical capital and vowed to fight BDS. Russia Sunken has also hailed uh, the Jewish state as a shining beacon of hope, expressed determination to eliminate scourge of anti-Semitism. A big aspect to understand Rashi Sunak is to understand his relationship with artificial intelligence. And as we see here, uh, AI has the potential to transform the economic landscape with significant social implications, says Sunak. Okay. And so, what does he uh, say? Uh, Sunak is pro is pro tech, uh, pro tech, and has been exceptionally vocal about the importance of artificial intelligence and its benefits. Its advancement could entail for the larger society, equating it to the likes of the revolutionary inventions like the steam engine and computers. During a conservative party conference in late 2021. Sunak emphasized that AI is an undeniable, undeniable reality and no longer fodder for science fiction. He added that the way steam engine propelled the industrial revolution, computers helped advance automation, and internet allowed for global information exchange, AI has the potential to transform economic landscape with significant social implications. And there's a quote there by him about that, about that it'll create billions of dollars. At the same event, Sunak announced a uh, 34 million British pounds national uh, national artificial intelligence fund for the creation of 2,000 elite AI scholarships to build the UK as a high tech economy of the future. And then he plans to put more money into it. What does this mean? Uh, it means he wants artificial intelligence to take over all the jobs, and that those jobs will give more profits to the rich. That's what it means. They're not going to say that, but that's what it ultimately means. That if a car can drive on its own, you don't need to pay the Uber driver anymore, right? The, 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 the car can automatically drive everyone across everywhere. And this is going to happen very quickly, just the way those of us that are old, you know, those of, those of you that are my age, like 50 and above, know how these transformations, we, 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 had, we, we had time with the... Um, Cell phones just came and we were just given minutes, 900 minutes for the whole family. And then it became, and then the internet came and then all these things came. And now, you know, thing, and when the changes came, it just came everywhere. And so <clears throat> the same thing here, artificial intelligence, those that are proponents for that and those that are proponents for that are part of the great glo the global reset. They're part of the fourth industrial revolution, which is basically chaos for the poor. I mean, it means the poor will get poorer and the rich will just get super rich. And so uh, what's interesting about AI, now those of you that may remember uh, that verse of the Quran that I many times allude to about the number 19, right? What you'll find interesting uh, in terms of number 19 in, in this regard and, and how uh, this person, Sanak, uh, comes back to the Quran, meaning Quran is speaking to the, uh, number one, the affluent of society. We talked about that verse. Now the second one is that I, because I know many people have already heard this, so I'm just going to summarize this, that the number 19 is a, uh, is a code, okay, that has to do with the hellfire, that in it, are, over it are 19, and there are 19 angels. And Allah subhanahu wa says, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ And we didn't make the angels of the hellfire, their number. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتَهُمْ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً We didn't make that number 19 except as a fitna. For who? لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا For the people who deny the truth, people who are ungrateful, 
people who always want more and more and that's what artificial intelligence is wanting more and more but that's not what has to do with number 19 interestingly enough i'll show you what does and now let me then first show you uh, what is interesting about number 19 and ai so if you see the, in this chart a is number one and i is number 19 again you have 19 so you have this ai phenomenon which he represents and you know all these things that have, relate to the number 119 whether it be 9 11 or or circus 19 or uh, you know, the 19 hijackers, all these number 19s, they point to a fitna, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the Quran uh, that what? That this number 19, we didn't make that number a la fitna, except as a fitna lilladina kafaru, for the people who deny the truth or the people who are ungrateful to me. And liyastayqina lilladina utul kitab. And so we will give certainty to those people who are the people of the book okay that they can know that this quran is true and it is pointing to true things because when you do see this number 19 in in in, in play in events then you know it, it it tells you the truth about what's going on and so the people of the uh, book and the believers will have no doubt so you should have no doubt that this person has other agendas up his sleeves that are not that are nothing but fitna and then nothing but fitna and nothing but chaos uh, for the city of the people and for in this case even the other cities of the country okay so now let's continue another thing about him is rashi sunak commits to ukraine so he commits to israel he commits to ukraine um, and, uh, you know, so this is all showing you what? All of this, he commits to AI, right? Artificial intelligence. This shows you that he's running an agenda. He is the same. He's nothing, you know, different leaders if they're true, right? If you're a true leader, if you're a true visionary, if you're a true statesman, there has to be something different about you than, than what has been going on in the past. There's nothing different about this guy. He's the same same stupidity, the same script of the globalists, exactly the same scripts as, as script of the globalists, okay? So this article in Political, you know, it says that to reassure Kiev, still pining for its departed ally Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson was so loud about Ukraine. So now he's trying to tell them, no, 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 I'm with you too, as well as to shore up pro-defense Tory PMs, uh, Sunken firmly committed to supporting the British armed forces and said the terrible war in Ukraine must be seen successfully to its conclusion. Okay. And in his, uh, and, and what is all this being done? Supporting Ukraine in the name of helping the economy. But anyone with two cents of a mind knows that that's not necessarily going to get you out of a bad situation. That might create a worse situation. So Sonic's first call with foreign leader was the Ukrainian president, okay, Zelensky, Tuesday night to tell him that his support will remain as strong as ever under his premiership. What a brilliant idea. What a brilliant new way to get people out of trouble. According to the readout from Downing Street, Zelensky in turn said the conversation had been excellent, signaling the UK's full support in face of Russian aggression. So... Nothing special about him in terms of his views. Another sign that he's just a, a you could say, a follower. He's the one who follows instructions. Crypto-friendly Rashi Sunak to become UK's Prime Minister following trust exit. So he's crypto-friendly. What does that tell you? That means the reset, the global reset. Nothing special here. Friends with Israel don't like Iran don't like Muslims, uh, I love Hinduism, I, I love Ukraine, I love crypto, I love artificial intelligence. All this points to, uh, uh, yeah, you know, since, uh, you know, the rich and the famous had to come and be given the reins of authority, 
in order to navigate everything into the direction of disorder that they wanted okay so so again about his type of thinking uk takes stakes in 150 firms as sunak prizes technology so technology ai this is his big thing cryptocurrency you know this is how he's trying to make his money how uh, rishi sunak became prime minister uh, britain's most powerful tech investor okay so he's the most powerful tech investor. Many of you will be familiar with the script that is given to people build back better, right? So, you know, build back better is what it's one of the scripts of uh, showing that they're part of the, uh, the global elite and their agenda in the fourth industrial revolution. So you see this over and over again with Rashi. But the most uh, interesting part I will just share with you shortly you can see him at CPC, the same thing is being said, build back better over here also. His previous job, the Chancellor's build back better budget, okay? So that's what, it's build back better. Obviously, it would go without saying, but he's mentioned several times in the World Economic Forum uh, website, just to give you maybe one or two examples of that, you know, uh, here's his picture actually in the on the website uh, on the World Economic Forum. And I don't know, it's kind of strange they have this picture of his with no information about him, just like a web a page with a picture of his. That's all. You know, uh, the UK will pay worker wages during the coronavirus pandemic. This is what he said during as a chancellor. OK, and so he's he's featured many times on the World Economic Forum. Um and uh, I think this is another one of his pictures. So we'll go to this one. Um, four ways to rescue. Uh, test, trace, and targeted support. Four ways to, to rescue the economy from the pandemic. Okay. So this is all the World Economic Forum, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. This, that whole same agenda. There's no original thinking here. This is not somebody who's a savior by any means necessary. This is a person who's going to continue people with the deception of doing something new but he's not uh let me tell you about him uh this is the vedic society his grandfather established he's a very strong practicing hindu practitioner uh in fact on the hindu temple website uh rashi sanak became the prime minister of uk on the on the wali so they consider this kind of like a sign from god Oh, wow, he became president on Diwali, you know, our religious holiday, 24th October, 22. He has very close relationship with the Vedic Society Hindu Temple. He attended the, the Balvikas classes as a child and continues to attend the temple. His grandfather was one of the founding members of the Vedic Society Hindu Temple. His parents and family have been actively involved with the temple for many years. He himself was a trustee in it. And, uh, you know, so they got all these and and you know th this is the uh the temple that he goes to on a regular basis as you can see here so he's a very strong uh hindu worshiper there's even a facebook uh, video of his worshiping the cow so he's all into that okay all into uh the the hindu religion now when especially you know proud hindu rashi uh sankar sports sacred thread during first speech so, you know, this uh, sacred thread that is, I think, a tradition that they have in the Hindu religion that a sister puts on to you that, uh, the, the red thread, okay? Um, so, uh, this is it. And uh, what does Quran tell us about uh, the mushrikeen, the people that will be worshipping idols, okay? Uh, what will be some of their qualities? is that they're the ones, meaning people in power, like Rashi, okay? Uh, let me see if I can show this to you, this verse of the Qur'an. This one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You will certainly find the people most hostile to the believers, al-Yahud, the Yahud, wal-ladhina ashraku, and those who do shirk. And when you say, look at this, wa, meaning those Yehud who have become friends with Mushrikeen, okay? 
meaning the Yehud and Mushriks when they come together. Just as when Christianity and Judaism, Judeo-Christian uh, civilization comes together. When the Hindu pagan civilization comes together. That coming together of theirs uh, on the idea of Zionism on both sides. Uh, then what? Uh, so Rashi represents and he's he's very active in India in terms of promoting technologies and so on and so forth. So those who believe, uh, um, uh, those who are against the believers, you will find the most harshest against them are the Jews and the pagans. Those who say we are Nasara and that is their identity without any other attached identities, they are the ones who will be good to the believers. Because they have priests and they have Ruhban monks and they don't they're not proud. So we have now looked at uh, three verses of the Quran. Uh, one is the verse of Quran that talks about Allah will destroy a city when the affluent become its ch in charge. Or Allah will destroy a city when its people get into luxuries. Okay, And uh, number two is the number 19 thing that I showed in relationship to AI. And number three is the Yehud and Hanud relationship. The Yehud and Hanud. Yehud and Pagan. Yehud and Pagan. Hanud. Hind. Hanud relationship. This type of relationship is anti-Muslim and is going to be very difficult for Muslims. So I suspect that this person does not have good feelings for the Muslims in uh, in, in England and in the West or for any any for that matter anywhere. Okay, and they have now taken power and they're going to create problems generally in the world. More war, more Ukraine, more war. They're going to take us on this. Uh, you know, on on uncharted waters of AI and technology, and everybody ends up losing their jobs because AI does everything. And I've talked about this in, at length, but I will be talking more about AI, inshallah, in the future. I, I plan to say many more things about AI, but it's also interesting. AI seems to be a number one letter of the English alphabet. I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. And so it seems to connect to the number 19 in that sense. And Allah knows best. And then, of course, he's a practicing Hindu. And uh, he stands for all the things like Israel, like for Ukraine, against Iran, pro-tech, pro-crypto, pro-artificial uh, pro intelligence. Uh, he's featured in the World Economic Forum. But despite all of that, the delusion that people are being sold that this person is an expert at what he does. He's not. He hardly has any experience. He was hardly at Goldman Sachs for three years. He, he hardly did three years of stock reporting. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, he knows his stuff, but he's not an expert by any chance. Uh, you know, by not, f f by any means, you know, he, he can't be defined as somebody who's an expert and will be able to take the, uh, the whole economy out of its problems while still pursuing a war with Ukraine. Okay. So, uh, this was to show you that how these events, step by step, step by step, the events are taking us in the direction the Prophet ﷺ told us. Okay, The events are going in the direction the Prophet told us. And what is that? The events are taking us in a, in a, in a, in a step by step direction of destruction of the cities and i've talked about this in detail but i'm not going to talk about it today but it is the destruction of the cities of the world because they're trying to do something impossible and uh they are trying to get their bankers and elite to push their agenda as much as possible and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran tells us in the end they will fail
They will fail, but that will not lead us to a better world immediately, no. It may lead us to a more difficult world, but it will be a world in which we can start to build towards a better world. So, inshallah ta'ala, what is the lesson for you? The lesson for you and me is that we have, as the number 19 ayah tells us, that we have yaqeen, certainty. That everything is going as planned and nothing will happen and nothing will go uh, in, in, in a way that is, meaning everything will go exactly as Allah has decided it to go and we just have to have the iman to go through these tribulations. But also we can increase our iman by seeing the world is going in the direction the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The world is going in the direction of the, that he told us. And so the Prophet told us people would be made in charge of us who don't deserve to be made in charge of us. And, the, and people are happy about that now. But that's okay. Because the believers will li- look at this whole scenario and say, Okay, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah. And his messenger told us, all you have to do is bring a, a, a group of ahadis, sayings of the Prophet together, and you can see the picture of what's happening in the world today. And so, it's very important for us, knowing that things are happening, as Allah had and his messenger had forecasted, and it is time for us to reflect on our own selves and see, okay, what Allah said and his messenger said are coming true. And all that is taking us where? To the day of judgment. To the end of human history on earth and the day of judgment. And so the point of seeing the signs of the day of judgment is that we have the motivation to be ready for the day of judgment first and foremost. And number two, to serve the deen, uh, to, it, to bring about and to be part of that movement, to be part of that uh, jama to be part of that movement that is going to be part of that movement that will bring the rise of Islam. Okay. So, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, give us all deeper understanding. Uh, please share with me if you found this conversation beneficial. Also, if you feel like it, please donate to our cause. I'll have the links in the comment section pinned. So, inshallah, taala, jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.